Our next item is the information item. Dr. Swift, you alluded to some budget concerns in your superintendent report. Would you like to introduce Mr. Dimitrio's uh, information item for us? Very good. Mr. Dimitriou, uh, our Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Operations is coming forward and we'll just let him roll through these items. First, the monthly budget monitoring report for May. Then secondly, our final budget amendment to wrap up 20, sorry, 2019-20. And then he'll move right into our proposed budget for 2020-21. Trustees, as you are aware, the end of this year uh, does look slightly better as you all have discussed, even at our prior meetings, it does look slightly better than we anticipated um, at this point, and we're grateful for that. And you can see as you look forward into the projected budget uh, that we are showing a shortfall for the year 2020-21. And so we will need those reserves to in order to do well and be able to survive the coming year. Now, as you know, trustees, at this point in time, there are far more unknowns than there are knowns in our budget information. So as we've said, and we wanna to continue to reiterate to the community, we will be amending this budget as we get the answers uh, as the governor alluded to today, as we receive those answers as to what the federal uh, dollars might be and what the state uh, revenue will be, uh, as we get that information, we will continue to update the budget throughout the year. As I turn it over to Mr. Dimitriou, I want to give a shout out uh, to Mr. Marios Dimitriou, um, Ms. Jill Minnick has worked alongside him and the finance team and trustees, as you know, they've been shorthanded um, a little bit during this time and they've also had COVID crisis management on top of the regular uh, significant budgeting process. So I just want to give a shout out, Mr. Dimitri, to you and the entire team for delivering this budget despite the many challenges. And uh, so this is a starting place tonight, and uh, we'll continue to amend and communicate and modify as we move through this next school year. So, um, Mr. Dimitri, this is the last time uh, we'll do this this way, and here you are uh, with your budget, one, two, three, uh, for the trustees this evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Swift. I think we have one more time, though next week. Yes, but you probably <laughs> won't present it in full that week. Well, you might. The trustees might want you to do it again. Um, so I think we should start basically with our May monthly monitoring so we can see where we are in May. Then we'll go into this year's final amendment, uh, our first and final amendment that we'll have this year. And then we'll go into next year's budget. Looking at our cash, we have approximately uh, $4 million more in cash. We have approximately $28 million, so $4 million more than we had last year. But more importantly, $6 million is in, in the general fund. Um, the Community Services Fund, um, because of COVID, has been uh, impacted uh, quite a bit. Looking at our expenditures for the month, you'll see that we spent approximately $18.7 million, so $17.7 million it's in the general fund, which is much lower than, than normal, uh, our normal $20, $21 million uh, for the month of May. And, and this is where you see some of the um, savings materialize um, in, in, um, in the general fund. So, <clears throat> Looking at the revenues now, uh, we've collected so far $228 million, which is approximately $7 million more than the year before. And that you see that almost all of the $7 million is in the general fund. 
And as far as expenditures are concerned, we spent so far 220, which is uh, $400,000 more than we did the year before. And again, the, the, almost all of it is in, it's in the general fund. Um, <clears throat> so as far as additions or reductions to fund balance, so far this year, we're about $7.6 million. Uh, we've added to the fund balance of about, which about $7.3 million is in the general fund. And uh, compared to last year, we've added 6.8, which is almost entirely uh, in the general fund. So looking at the bottom line, um, we have, as of the end of May, approximately $28.7 million in fund balance, which is approximately $6 million better than we were at the same time last year. Um, looking at budget to date, so in the month of May, we've collected almost $12 million and we spent approximately $18.7 million. So um, again, our total revenues are 228, our expenditures are 220, and we have collected 83% of our revenues and we spent, of our budgeted revenues, and we've spent approximately 81% of our budgeted expenditures. Again, looking at <clears throat> for the month of May, we've used approximately $6.7 million of our fund balance. And um, so far we added to fund balance seven point, almost $7.7 .7 million. Um, so overall, uh, we have approximately $28.7 million, uh, which almost 25 is in the general fund. So overall a very, very, positive, financially very positive report in regards to, um, to a whole school district, especially in the general fund for the month of May. So the next one, we'll go to the, uh, the final amendment for this year, where we think we're going to end up this year. So um, for a final amendment, one of the big assumptions that we're making is that there will be no reduction in state funding for this year. Um, as you remember, we have been asked not to lay off anybody and that we have been promised that we will receive our full funding. And if we did lay off people that state aid was going to be taken away. So we are making the assumption that um, we will not be reduced for state funding this year. Uh, so some of the highlights of the changes that we've made uh, in comparison to the original budget is that uh, we're including this uh, sale of future cell tower revenues, which uh, is on the agenda today. Um, we're increasing the federal revenues uh, due to the CARES Act grant of about one point, uh, almost $1.3 million. We're adding... Um, additional special education uh, Act 18 funding from the WISD. Uh, we already know that we are collecting additional of what we originally budgeted. Also, we are reducing expenditures, as, as you saw in, in, the, in the monthly monitoring that our expenses in the general fund were approximately $17.7 .7 million when Normally in the month of May, they are somewhere between 20 to $21 million. So, so there's some of the savings, um, uh, for example, substitute uh, teachers uh, that we, we're not hiring now in, in this environment or the taxes to transport students, you know, homeless students or, or special education students, we, we're, we're not spending so the significant savings. Utilities, there's significant savings. Uh, there's also in regular transportation, uh, some savings. So it's, it's a collection of savings, supplies, and so forth. Um, so they, they kind of showed up um, very strong in the month of May, and, and, and we expect the same to happen in, in, in the month of June, not as because school closed, uh, closes on, on June 12th, primarily. Uh, we uh, 
it is not as, as um, the, the savings won't be as great as it was in, in the month of May, but we expect them to continue. So we've, we, we've uh, also included the bonuses, the collective bargaining agreements are, are included. And then um, we, we kind of, uh, you know, figured out the, um, the people that will be paid their 26 pay uh, in the month of uh, July and August, the state aid that we're going to receive in them. So we've adjusted a whole, uh, many, many items. So what does the amendment look like? So on the revenue side, you'll see that we're increasing the revenues to from 259 to 264. Um, and we, we, we talked about the grants that we had. We talked about the ISD funding. Um, there were adjustments up and down in, in the local sources, but the cell towers are in here. And then uh, from the state sources, we adjusted to uh, what we know is going to be by the end of the year. On the expenditure side, you'll see some of the expenditures going up, which is primarily the bonuses in, in, in all these categories. And then you start seeing some of the savings in transportation, in operations and maintenance, some of the things that we talked about. So overall, our expenditures uh, go from 259, almost 260 million to 261 which is approximately $1.5 million higher than what we originally budgeted last June. Um, so uh, we expect at the end of this year that we will, have, we will add to the fund balance about $3 million. So it will go from, we started the year at 17 and a half. So we will end at about $20,575,000, uh, which, which is, um, approximately uh, seven, uh, a little bit over 7%, uh, probably closer to 8% of fund balance. So this is the amendment. And if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to take them. If there's no questions, then I can move to next year's budget. I see no hands raised. I think that means it is clear to go ahead. Move on. All right. Trustee, Trustee Kelly? Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, Mr. Demetrio, you might want to touch on, um, you referenced that we don't believe we can be cut for this year, but will you clarify for the community and all of us, has the door closed on that possibility? Uh, I just want to be clear about that fact. Um, uh, the door has not closed. Um, the, the school district receives um, state aid payments 11 times a year, and they start in October, and then they end in August. So we still have to receive, our, and we get paid on the 20th of each month. So we still have to receive June, July, and August state aid payments. So we know that the state is um, short. They're estimating they had a May revenue consensus conference. Some of this information is in the next year's budget, but I can address it right now. So there was a May revenue consensus conference that basically showed that for this year, it will be about a billion dollars short in the school aid fund, and next year, approximately 1.1 billion dollars short in the school aid fund. Um, we also know the state has received 3.9 billion dollars, um, of which I know that there are discussions. That, that 3.9 billion dollars came with quite a bit of restrictions and there are discussions to um, relieve some of those restrictions so it can be used where it's needed. Um, and I know there's also discussions at the federal level for another stimulus package that 
uh, would primarily go to the states and then the states can use it for um, what is needed, you know, for the services they provide, including education. So that door has not been, uh, has not been shut yet. Uh, but I know there's every effort and commitment from both sides of the aisle to not harm education this year. Uh, there have been no such promises for next year, just uh, and, and, and commitments, I guess, from, uh, just for this year. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much.